Hey guys, Lewis here, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through this tool that I've got here, and this is SEMrush, and I'm going to show you some of the things that I liked about SEMrush and some of the things that I didn't like. So I, obviously I call it SEMrush, some people call it SEMrush, doesn't really matter, same thing. So first of all, what is it? Now SEMrush is a competitor analysis tool, and what that means is it provides data so that you can see what's working for your competitors and what's not working for them. Now, the, the key thing here is that once you know what's working for your competitors, you can then apply that to your own business. And specifically, what we're going to focus on in this video is how SEMrush helps you reverse engineer your competitors' organic rankings, or what's known as uh, competitor-based keyword research. And when you contrast that to the traditional traditional approach, this works better because you're looking at what's already working, what's, what keywords are already proven. And most SEOs agree that this is a much better way to do keyword research in most cases. So I'm going to dig into the tool and show you how some of it works. Now before I start plugging away, I'm going to talk about the interface because I remember when I first started using SEMrush, it was a little bit overwhelming at first. Uh, there seems to be a lot going on. There's a lot, a lot of colors, a lot of fields, a lot of buttons. It just it can be a bit confusing at first. But honestly, this tool is actually quite simple. There's not a whole lot to it, even though it appears that there is. If I scroll down here, I mean, these are just links to some of the different sections of the tool, and that's, they're also in the sidebar here. And then you've got links to their blog posts and their upcoming webinars and news. And then you've got a footer that takes up nearly my whole screen here. So really, it's just a bit cluttered. They've, they've tried to make it look more advanced than it actually is, in my opinion. Uh, once you actually start using this tool, very quickly you'll start to see that there isn't a whole lot to it. So let's get into it. Now I'm going to put Neil Patel's site in Quicksprout as an example because it's a big site, it's going to return a, a fair number of results and I think it's a good, a good site for this test. And when you run the search, you're going to get a bunch of stuff back, uh, lots of data. It's going to be a bit confusing, you're not going to know what to do if, you've, if this is the first time you've used SEMrush. Really, you just want to know what it is, what's your one goal, what are you trying to do here? And obviously in this video, as I said, we're trying to reverse engineer the organic rankings and that would come under the organic research tab. So I'm going to click that. And I'm going to let that load. It takes a couple of seconds. First thing you're going to notice here is the traffic estimates. These are organic estimates. They only show search traffic. They only show desktop traffic. And they're only an estimate. Now, you can switch over to the mobile tab here. But you're not going to get all that data in one place. And it's definitely not a very accurate representation of the real traffic that this site is getting. And you can use other tools like SimilarWeb to contrast that and get a better idea of what that traffic is like. But like I said, these tools are not accurate and you should just take this information uh, with a pinch of salt. Now we're already on the positions tab and this is the area most people jump to when they first start using SEMrush. And what this gives you is the top 100 results in Google for this domain. So you're gonna get a bunch of keywords and actually I've got 117,000 keywords here. So that's a lot and they're sorted by a traffic percentage so I can see which keywords are performing the best for Neil and which ones are actually proven to work. And the key with this is to choose competitors that have the same authority as you or less. And when, when you can find competitors in that range, you know that if they're ranking, in most cases, you can also rank. So that's the idea behind this whole process. Now, as with any kind of keyword research, you need to look at certain metrics to get a better idea of what's going on. And SEMrush actually includes a keyword difficulty metric over here. Now from our testing, this metric is very unreliable and it's actually one of the biggest drawbacks of SEMrush because it makes it almost impossible to evaluate the real strength of a keyword. There isn't any SERP analysis and if you wanted to analyze a keyword manually, you would literally have to install Mozbar and, and type that, that keyword into Google to check the domain authority and page authority for each of those results. And even then, you're not going to have the backlink data that I think is necessary for a real manual analysis. So in that regard, SEMrush is really, really poor. 
Of course, if you can pay for a tool, I would recommend Keyword Finder, and that way you can plug any promising keywords into Keyword Finder and get a much more reliable keyword difficulty score, along with a built-in SERP analysis that I actually really liked. Now, let's look at position changes. And essentially, this looks at SERP movement. So it looks at what keywords are climbing and what keywords are falling for this competitor. Now, obviously, you only want keywords that are performing well. And for that reason, you only want to look at the new and the improved filters here. So if I scroll down, I can see that these have recently appeared in the top 100 results. And I find that this is a really, really good way to find some long tail keywords. So I've got one here, how to get people to comment on your blog. And it's got 70 searches. Now, obviously, as I said before, this is gonna take a bit of extra manual research because Semrush's KD score is just not reliable enough. So in that regard, it's good for finding long tail keywords, but it's not good for evaluating the keyword difficulty, which is obviously unfortunate. So let's move on to the competitor tab. So the more competitors that you give this tool, the more keywords it's gonna give you back. Now that's obvious, but how do you find competitors? You can of course go to Google, type in your keywords and find competitors that way. Or you can use SEMrush's competitor tab here, which in this case has brought back 19,000 competitors. Not all of these are going to be relevant and you do get a competition level metric here to gauge how relevant those competitors are. And that works based on the common keywords and the overall search engine keywords. So the more keywords it has in common with your seed domain here, the higher up it's gonna show. And obviously you can use your own domain as well as uh, your competitors. That's a good way to get a good range of different competitors from this tool. I have found that after a few pages, so if I go to say page four, the domains start to lose a lot of relevance and you definitely can find one or two here, but you start to see some weird domains like Flipper, uh, American Express. You know, it, the, as you can see, it even recognizes that the competition level is almost non-existent. And again, we're only on page four of 193. So even though it does return a huge amount of results, you're only going to get value from the first few pages most of the time. And of course, this isn't just good for competitor research. You can use this tool for relationship building and networking and link building and all that good stuff. So even just as a standalone tool, this does have its uses. So let's go to the next option here, and that is the pages analysis. This essentially takes you from the keyword level to the page level and allows you to reverse engineer proven content. So it shows you the best performing pages for your seed competitor, which in this case is Quicksprout, and it sorts them by traffic percentage or how much traffic they bring to this site. So I can see here the beginner's guide to online marketing accounts for over 15% of Quicksprout's organic traffic, and that is massive. So I could definitely go through this list and see what different topics I could write about myself, and then I could also dive into those keywords to see which ones I should be targeting in that article, in that content. So this is a very powerful feature that you can use with your most relevant competitors to get proven content ideas and then fill them out with proven keywords. Now I should say that there are other factors involved here. Just because this piece of content is performing well for Neil doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna perform well for me and that's because of off-page factors. Now SEMrush does try to give you some indication so if I click the info tab here, you'll see that it gives me a backlink report, 367 backlinks to this page. But SEMrush is notoriously bad for link analysis and it only shows a tiny percentage of the true backlink profile. So it's very unreliable and you'd probably be better off, no, you would be better off with a free plan of Ahrefs or Majestic or even better if you can afford a paid plan because it can be quite limited. And what's funny is that they actually have a dedicated backlink analysis, which I'm going to switch over to now. So on the surface, it all looks good. It's well laid out, but this probably comes as no surprise. It's also very unreliable. So again, for backlink analysis, I recommend Ahrefs or Majestic. Even if you have to stick to that free plan, it's still way better than what SEMrush gives you because it's just not reliable. 
Okay, we're coming to the end here. So the next thing I want to show you is the SEO keyword magic. So if I go to keyword analytics, SEO keyword magic, and this is SEMrush's attempt at integrating their own traditional keyword research tool. And I should say, this is still in beta. I've already put one in here. It's how to start a blog. And I've got a list of results here. I don't actually know how big that list is because over here it says all keywords zero, which is obviously a bug. It's also broken these down into categories. And if I click money, for example, I get another bug. So I'll click back to all keywords. If I include a filter word, so blog, and again, another bug. So already you can see that this is practically unusable. None of the filters work. If I remove this, even if I was just to analyze these keywords here, the only real metric that I have is the KD metric, which as we've already discussed is totally inaccurate. To do a SERP analysis, I would have to click this and it would open the actual Google search results page, which you can then evaluate using the free Mozbar extension. But it's just totally inefficient and very ineffective as a tool. And I would not recommend SEMrush for traditional keyword research, even though they're trying to make steps in that direction. They're not quite there yet. Now, I did mention Ahrefs a few times throughout this video, and I actually want to bring you over to Ahrefs now because I want to show you how similar this tool is and actually how much better it is because Ahrefs has an incredible amount of data which makes their link index incredibly more reliable. When you really do a side-by-side -side comparison, you start to see that Ahrefs does not only pretty much everything SEMrush can do, but a whole lot more as well. So this is just the site explorer. We haven't even spoke about the content explorer, the keywords explorer, the dozens of different report types that you can get here and the very comprehensive link index, which I have mentioned, but honestly, Ahrefs is hands down the better tool. And we did write a, a very thorough review of Ahrefs, which I will link to below the video. And ultimately, when you compare the fact that these two tools are essentially the same price, your money is much better spent on Ahrefs. So that's my review of SEMrush. And unfortunately, it didn't come out very well in this review. I feel like SEMrush was great when it first hit the market. It had this very new approach to keyword research. But since then, it stopped innovating, it stopped growing. And I feel like Ahrefs has just taken that lead now. And it, as I've said, uh, just a better alternative. So I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next video.